All right, so I hate internet drama. I never involve myself in internet drama because I think it's gay. And that's just how I've always been. If you disagree with me, I'm just going to block you. I've been like that for the last six years since I've been on the internet. When I had my Instagram page before it got banned and I had 6,000 followers, I had over a thousand people blocked. Now you can criticize my tactics, but that's just how I am. I'm not here to go back and forth with people. I make stuff on the internet as a hobby. I have a full-time career. I have a family life. This is something I do for fun. I, I'm passionate about the things that I support and believe in, but this is not my life. So when people try to bring me into drama or talk shit about me, I literally just block them. Now, for the past couple of weeks before I got banned off of Twitter, pretty much ever since I started associating with JB, so thanks JB, um, I've been getting shit talked by a lot of people within the America First movement, which that's fine. From their perspective, I just came out of nowhere and uh, people started following me and then they see that I make content so they think that I'm trying to clout chase or whatever the case may be, which is an understandable viewpoint to have if you don't know any better, but a, a quick tiny search of my content would show that that is just clearly not the case. And I wasn't even going to respond to any of this. I was just going to keep blocking people and let it go. But Beardson, somebody who I actually like and respect, as well as Steven Franson, did this stream, and I actually ended up going on this stream, not because I was watching it, I was actually at work at the time, but while it was happening, these two homosexuals that have been shit-talking me for weeks on the internet, on Twitter, and making edits of me, and lying about me blatantly, uh, were being... I guess interviewed or whatever or featured on his stream and they started talking shit about my parenting saying that I neglect my kids and just really like childish provocative stuff that one obviously they would never say to my face and two just blatant lies and talking about things that they have no idea what they're talking about and I ended up going on the stream saying what I had to say just saying basically that if you don't like my content don't watch it but don't talk about my children. And the only reason I knew that they were talking about me was because I was getting messages saying, oh, do you see what these guys are saying about you and your kids on, on uh, Beardson stream? And I was at work and uh, I put it on and I saw JB being drunk and uh, saying, uh, oh, would you like somebody to talk about your kids or whatever? So I jumped on the Discord server and talked for like five minutes, but I really couldn't talk long because I had to go back to work. I never watched the stream after that, but then Beardson is t uh, reposting things on Gab with my picture in it, which, okay, whatever, I have no idea, I didn't watch the stream yet, so I'm going to watch some of it and respond to it, because even though I respect Beardson and Steve Franson, I feel like they are making presumptions about me that are just not accurate and not true, so this is going to be the first and last time that I address these issues and that I clear the air and uh, just say what my response is and how I feel about this stuff and what is actually going on. This was recorded on, or streamed I should say, last Friday I believe. So, okay, so let me give you a little bit of a backstory so for people who aren't aware of what's happening. So, I started making videos with JB, right? And because I, I've been making videos for over two years. I was on Instagram making, I started off making memes, then I started making these corny cartoons. Then about two years ago, I started showing my face and doing commentary videos and reaction videos and stuff like that. And mind you, I was not on Twitter at this time. I had a Twitter account that I never used. I don't even think I had the Twitter app downloaded. And then after I've been making content for all of these years, I ended up going to a Stop the Steal rally and I met Nick Fuentes and then I bought some of his merch and posted a picture on Twitter because I knew that if I tagged him, he might see it. Actually, I think Beardson was the one who retweeted me in the, in the America First shirt, and that's what made Nick Fuentes follow me. And then once Nick Fuentes followed me, a bunch of other America First people started following me, and I started getting in contact with a lot of America First people and actually have made some really good friends through all of this stuff. And I pledged my loyalty to America First and to Nick Fuentes, and uh, it was a great experience. Now, mind you, I have been making content before I publicly endorsed Nick Fuentes or America First, and then once a certain subsect of America First saw that I was making content, they assumed that I just latched on to America First, came out of nowhere, and started making content to try to grift off of the America First movement, which is complete nonsense. So 
then these this, this one specific person, I don't even want to say his name, but whatever, drug cell, starts making content about me and JB because he doesn't like JB. Now, drug cell was somebody that I followed. I think we might have been mutuals at one time. I don't know if he followed me, but I followed him. And I thought it was really funny when he uh, he wrecked Pokimane. He had like... I don't even know, like maybe th two or three thousand followers, and he ratioed Pokimane, who's that like horror streamer, gamer girl, or whatever. I thought that was hilarious. Then he also went on stream with Beardson and JB before I was even like doing videos with JB, and he like <laughs> roasted JB. I thought that was pretty funny. Then when I started making videos with JB, he made an edit of me putting my face over the guy in Inglorious Bastards and basically saying that. Uh, I was harboring enemies of the state, meaning JB. And it was pretty funny because I actually looked like the guy. I liked I liked the tweet. And th that's another thing. These people will say, I'm gonna I'm just gonna get to this now, but they're gonna say, um, they were saying like, oh, you can't take the banter, so you just block people. No, I, I think that was funny. I could take banter when it's in good faith, when it's funny, when you're just going back and forth or whatever, that's fine. That wasn't the problem because I liked that stuff. I thought that was pretty clever and, and funny. What I didn't like was then next, Drug Cell made a tweet saying something along the lines like, oh, JB is going to be here forever like a cockroach after a nuclear holocaust, and we're going to have these subversives like Carter and Spexo. He's going to have a limited, limited, a, a limitless uh, intake or something of Carter's and Spexo, whatever the case was. But he was basically implying that I was like a subversive wignat trying to infiltrate the movement of America first, and that I was just like this flash in the pan clout chaser who's gonna be here one day and then gone the next day. Meanwhile, I've been here for six years. I've been supporting America first implicitly since 2018, which ironically, Beardson is the one who introduced me to Nick Fuentes in late 2018. And I've been posting clips of Nick since 2019 on my Instagram, and I only publicly endorsed and supported the America first movement and Nick Fuentes in late, uh, 2020 when I met him because I have explained this multiple times and you could literally just go to any of my content where I talk about this that I endorsed him and said that I support him once I met him and then super chatted him and he said that I have good optics and he was glad to have me in the movement that's it and another thing right I know I should be reacting to this as I watch the video I know we're probably like 10 minutes into this video and I haven't even started watching the video yet this is probably gonna be a super long video hopefully I can edit it to make it a little bit shorter and concise but uh, I do have a lot of things to say I've been keeping quiet for a really long time but one thing I'll say before I start this again is that people were saying like oh you were saying that, uh, oh, Nick likes you, so therefore nobody else can hate you. I was like, that, that is not <laughs> what I was saying at all. I posted a clip because people were in the super chats. Uh, I got <laughs> That's another thing that these guys did. I'll get to that in a little while too. These guys are really, really gay with the stuff that they did. But they were in the super chats trying to get Nick to speak bad about me for the last like two weeks. He wouldn't do it and stuff. He said that he liked me. And then I talked to Nick privately. He told me to just keep doing my own thing. Don't worry about what anybody says. Cause I was, cause people were trying to be like, oh, is Spexo a groiper general? Which I've explicitly stated, like, oh, I'm not trying to be an authority figure. I'm not trying to be a leader of anything. I simply do my own thing. I'm not an America first content creator. I am a content creator who supports America first, right? Now it's awesome that Nick likes me. That makes me feel really great because I admire Nick. But even if Nick said something like he hates me or that he thinks my content is cringe or whatever the case may be, if he flat out disavowed any contact with me or whatever the case may be, I would still support him and America first because I truly believe it is the only viable political option if there is a political solution to fix the things that are going on in this country. If there is a political solution, which there might not be, it is going to be through Nick Fuentes and America First, in my personal opinion. So regardless of who likes me and who doesn't, I am always going to be an America First loyalist. I'm always going to support uh, you know, Nick Fuentes and America First. Now, if he actually came out and, or he messaged me and said, look, don't mention me anymore, don't support me, it's making me look better, or whatever, then I would. I would, I would step away. I would stop, stop talking about Nick or America First at all. But... Uh, I would still always support the message. So that's just how it is. So we're going to start watching this and uh, and see what happens. I haven't watched this, like I said, so we'll see what they were talking about. I, I feel like I have to weigh in here on this one because this one's like, it's like every time I get on my fucking timeline, it's like, 
That's what I see. But I want to. I just want to come. I wanted to come in and speak on this. I mean, essentially, what's happening is like you have a group of like shit posters and people that make good content, kind of going after a group of people that make kind of like not good content. Okay, that's what you're kind of seeing. I, I guess like I'm getting like personally. I have. I have a. Okay, look. I have a high mark for quality. Okay. I've been around for fucking years on Twitter. Okay? I've been around on Twitter for a while. I I get easily bored. Okay? And I will say that. I get easily bored. I expect good content. And whenever I see bad content, I get like angry about it. I do. I get like pissed. It like hurt it like it fucking pisses me off whenever I see bad content. Someone's me hey Harris Walker in the chat, let's go. Harris Walker is drug cell, by the way. Someone's making the bad content, Beardson. And they are. And I see, like, boring and bad content, and it, it makes me mad. And I, and I, and I, and I feel, like, kind of bad about it because some of these guys are really nice guys. Like, I've met them and everything. They're nice people. It's me. He's talking about me. I'm a really nice guy. But they make really fucking bad content, dude. It's awful. So I'm pretty sure he's talking about me saying I make bad content and as well as JB, which that's not really a criticism. I mean, it is a criticism, but it's like, okay, then just don't watch it. You know, like I don't watch Beardson. The only time I've ever watched Beardson is when Nick is on his show or when it was the Patrick Casey stuff going on. Other than that, I don't, I don't watch anybody else except for Nick Fuentes and Vincent James out of the America First content creator people or whatever. So, like, I'm not going to say, like, oh, I hate your content, you're boring, you suck, or whatever, but it's just not for me, so I don't watch it. doesn't mean I don't like you as a person, doesn't mean anything. So, I don't understand if people are making content that you personally don't enjoy, then just don't watch it. I don't, I don't get the, uh, how that's, like, an actual legitimate criticism, but maybe that's just me. I can, I, like, I can smell the new on you. I can smell, it's like a new car smell. You know, whenever you test drive a car, and you're like... Damn, this smells fresh and new. That's what. That's every time I see these people's content. See, I don't know if he's talking about me right now, but if he is, it's just misrepresenting or just not knowing me, which is not his fault necessarily because he only knows me from Twitter over the last couple of months. But it, like I've said, I've been making content for over six years. Now, you could say I make trash content, that you don't like it. That's fine. But to, to say that... I'm only making content in the last couple of months and you can smell the new on me. If he's talking about me, I really don't know. I, like I said, I haven't watched this, so whatever the case may be, but it's just not true. Oh. The bad content is bad for the soul. We all know this. It, that is actually very true. Hold on, I want to... <laughs> Tom AF, the guy that just donated. So this is what I didn't mention in the beginning. I was going to mention later, but this is, this is how pathetic these people are, right? So... The reason that this whole thing originally started where it like blew up because I started getting messages saying like, oh, there's 20 people on the timeline right now roasting you, right? So I just started, anytime I would get sent a link, I would just block everybody who liked, who liked the tweet and who was sharing it and retweeting it and all that stuff. And then I have somebody who is in the Discord with these people and it turns out they didn't like that I posted my interview with Nick Fuentes on Good Morning Groiper on my YouTube channel. So they decided, oh, and then because somebody sent me a, uh, a message saying like, oh, uh, JB and Spexo haters, um, when Nick says that he likes them or whatever, and it's like the Skyrim sneak, like you're not, you don't want to be visible or whatever. And then it was like Spexo and JB haters when JB smoked weed nine years ago and now associates with Spexo. And then it was like the detected saying, oh, now they all come out. Like meaning basically that everybody wants to, to they don't say anything when Nick says that uh, there is no America first without JB and that he likes Spexo or whatever. But then when people start going and digging through JB's uh, tweets from nine years ago when he was smoking weed, then they connect it with that and that Spexo is now associating with this degenerate that they don't like. So that was basically the joke. And they got offended at this, I guess, that I posted my interview with on Good Morning Groiper, which really doesn't make any sense. I got to talk to somebody 
on his show who I admire and think is the best political commentator in the world right now, and I have a YouTube channel and an Instagram channel, why would I not post it? That doesn't make any sense. So anyway, they st I, all of a sudden, spontaneously, all these people start talking shit about me on the Twitter timeline. And it turns out, because somebody, a couple of people that were in their uh, JDen Discord server were coordinating to talk shit about me. Like, so this guy, Tom F, uh, I have the screenshot, right? So let me actually read it. So Tom AF posts a poll that he put it on Twitter and he says, Spexo, Baster, Cringe, hashtag Disrespexo, which is the hashtag that Harris Walker came up with, which is clever because Disrespexo, because my name's Spexo. So we're going to disrespect Spexo. It's like a play on words. It's really funny. So he posts this in his Discord server, and then Harris Walker says, uh, everybody go vote qu go vote cringe, right? And then people go, 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 vote or die, get in there, go, 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 done, I did it. So it's like these lowlifes were coordinating on Discord to raid my Twitter. And then when I was blocking all of them, they're saying how sensitive I am, and I can't take the bants. And it's like, no, I'm just, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not 16 years old. So whatever, that's a little backstory. I do want to clarify this because I think he's a, t I think he's a nice guy. I think he's a really nice guy. I am. I'm very nice. I met him a couple times. Nice guy. But I'm seeing this feud between him, and I'm seeing this feud between some of my other mutuals. There, there was no feud though. There, that's like what I don't understand. It was people talking shit about me and me blocking them. It wasn't a feud. It wasn't going back and forth, quote tweeting. I said one thing, and so Drug Cell said something like, "I'm going to keep attacking Spexo until he uh, until he leaves the internet forever," or something like that. And the only thing I responded with was uh, I, uh, some GIF saying, "I ain't going nowhere," right? Basically, just saying that I know what you guys are doing. I don't care and nothing you say is going to make me leave or stop supporting America first, right? That was the extent of what I said. The other thing I said, which I deleted right away because I realized uh, it was just giving them attention, which I shouldn't, I shouldn't have done, and I deleted it within like three minutes, and somebody still took a screenshot of it and posted it on their Twitter. That's how, the, and, and people were saying like, oh, you're saying your haters are obsessed with you? And it's like, well, they're coordinating on Discord to attack my Twitter and they're screenshotting everything I say and they're going through all of my content. And um, so yeah, that is a little bit of obsessive behavior, I, I would say. So what I posted was, yeah, I'm aware of the anti-Spexo uh, subculture going on on Twitter right now by all of these obsessed homosexuals and I gotta say, I'm just honored. I posted that just to let people know that I knew what was going on and I deleted it like nearly almost immediately and they still screenshotted it and were sending it around like it was like an epic own. The reason I deleted it was because I didn't want to give you people attention because I realized that you guys get madder the more I just don't engage with you and ignore you. And the reason that I ignored you is because nothing you were saying was accurate. And it wasn't until you started talking about my family that I responded once and then also came on the show because you were talking about my family that you have nothing, that you know nothing about. One guy was like, uh, oh, Spexo posts pictures of his family, which means he doesn't protect them. And I responded, every picture that I posted on the internet of my family has had their face censored or it was obstructed and you couldn't identify them. So you're just blatantly lying about me. But we'll get more into that. Let's just keep going, I guess. But yeah, so that's that's basically it. These people were like coordinating on uh, on Discord to attack me in their gay little Discord server, and I wasn't responding. I was just blocking like everybody, right? And that made them more mad, and then that made them, oh, he's so sensitive. Okay. <laughs> and I'm like, you cannot handle the banter, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you can't handle it. There was and no... It, if I couldn't handle the banter, it would be me saying stuff like, why is everybody attacking me? Why is everybody so mean? I hate the internet. This sucks. Instead, it was me blocking people and then making the tweets that I normally make. I don't understand where this idea coming from that I can't handle I can't handle criticism or the bans. It's like, no, if you talk shit about me, especially if you're just going to lie about me, you don't necessarily deserve my attention or a response. I'm not talking about Beardson, I'm talking about Harrison Walker and 
fucking Gibby and Tom AF and stuff like that. Like, they think, oh, I'm going to talk shit about this guy, and he needs to respond to me. And if he doesn't respond to me, then he's just sensitive. And it's like, no, you don't, <laughs> you don't deserve my attention, necessarily, right? So, I mean, you eventually did get it, and you're getting it now, but uh, this is actually more of a response to Beardson and Steve Franson because I actually respect and like those guys, whereas Gibby and Tom AF and all of these other uh, anonymous homosexuals, I really don't care what they say. And honestly, the only person I really care what he has to say is Nick, and once again, like I said, even if Nick didn't like me, I would still support America First because this is a hobby of mine that I'm passionate about. So, okay. But here's what I want you to do. Look at every single, like, content creator in America first, okay? Nick, hilarious. Me, I'm pretty funny. Jaden's hilarious. Jake Lloyd's a funny guy. Steve's hilarious. Vince is hilarious. Are you noticing a pattern? We're all funny. That may not be the sole focus of everybody's content, but we all have comedy chops, and we're all funny people. Okay? Mm. Every single one of us. Baked. Fucking hilarious. Okay? Maybe the kid... Baked Alaska, maybe the kid... Alright, I mean... <laughs> okay. This is operating under the assumption that I'm trying to be an America First content creator. Which, as I've repeated multiple times, I'm not. I am a content creator who, who's been a content creator as a hobby, not as a lifetime career, not to make money... Although I've recently started making a tiny bit of money. I've made like $47. Whew. Oh, I'm going to be rich. This is a hobby. I am a content creator, which I think that term is just really gay. But I'm a content creator who supports America First. I'm not trying to be an America First content creator. Uh, does, that not make, does that not make sense? Secondly, if you don't find me funny or you don't find my content interesting, then, okay, don't watch it. Cause some people do. And I know this because I get messages all the time telling me that they are so glad that they found me, that I'm an inspiration to them, blah, 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 blah. And I know for a fact that I brought dozens of people to more nationalist political viewpoints. And I know for a fact, even more importantly, that I brought dozens of people to Catholicism, which is even more important than America First, in my opinion. So you can not like my content, you can not like me, that's fine don't watch my content. Like, it's, I'm not going to stop because you don't find me entertaining personally when other people do, understand? And I'm not trying to disrespect or take a dig at Beardson, but it's just... The, the, what, what really, like, started this whole thing for me wanting to weigh in on this was, like, I did a stream maybe about a month ago where I was talking mainly... It was, like, right after AFPAC, and I was mainly just trying to warn, like, future content creators, like, look, like, this is what you're signing up to do. And, and this is what you want to do. You need to be careful. And this is what this is how you need to approach these things. And as soon as I did this stream, I get invited to this fucking group chat. And JB is like... So, Beardson, now that you're in a group chat with Spec, why don't you tell him what how you feel about him? And I'm like... What the fuck are you talking about? Like, what are you, what are you talking about? And Spec sends me this, like, really long, like, DM, like, hey, brother, I hope you're not talking about me. And I was like, I, I wasn't. Like, I, I didn't even know you made content. No, that's not what happened at all, actually. Just let me clear the air on that. He made a stream, I guess, after uh, Nick put a tweet out saying that um, he might get banned from Twitter because the SPLC or Megan Squire or somebody was putting out a hit piece on him. And uh, I made a tweet saying, I hope that if Nick is banned, that there is a mass exodus of America First people because there's something specifically satanic about Twitter compared to other social media platforms that I can't stand. Now, this wasn't saying that nobody should be on Twitter and that it's not good to have a Twitter to get our message out there. It wasn't saying anything. I was just giving my opinion that I hate Twitter and that if Nick was kicked off of Twitter, I hope that I could find America First people on other platforms so I don't have to use Twitter because the only reason that I'm using Twitter is for America First content. I never used Twitter before I started supporting publicly America First and getting in contact with America First people. So I put out that tweet and I got a bunch of pushback saying, oh, now you think you're a shot caller? That fucking retard Gibby saying, 
saying, oh, you have a thousand followers, so now you could be a shot caller in America first, like being like uh, sarcastic and trying to rip me, like like I'm trying to be a person of authority in the America first uh, movement because I put out my opinion. So then apparently after that, Beardson does a stream where he basically quotes my uh, my tweet but then says it wasn't about me. Now, I didn't watch the stream. I got messages from people saying, oh, Beardson is talking about you, saying that you, you're trying to be a shot caller and stuff like that. So I messaged him and very respectfully said, hey man, I heard you did a stream and you were talking about me. I didn't watch it, but uh, I heard that you were saying that I'm trying to be a shot caller in America first and that I'm trying to uh, tell people to leave Twitter. That's not the case at all. I was simply giving my opinion because I personally don't like Twitter. I am not trying to be disrespectful. I'm not trying to overstep my boundaries or anything like that. So I hope that you did not take offense and I'm sorry if I offended you, right? A very respectful DM. And then he responds, oh no, bro, I, didn't, I wasn't talking about you at all. Uh, I was just seeing a bunch of stuff on my timeline. So I said, oh, all right, good. That makes me feel a lot better. Good luck on your Fortnite tournament, right? That was literally the extent of it. So I don't know why he's saying it like, like, that, like this. That's not how it happened, but all right. Harris Walker, like I love Harris, dude. I've known Harris for a long fucking time, you know? And they're all beefing with him, and and like a, a lot a lot of other people. It wasn't a beef. Are, are beefing with. <laughs> they were attacking me, predicated on lies or misinterpretations, without knowing anything about me, and I wasn't responding. I don't really think that's considered a beef. And I'm st like in this group chat with them, and I did I just didn't say anything for like a long time after that. I just like lurked, you know. I just lurked, and and, and everything, and it just like. I don't know. I'm not going to, like, leak anything that happened other than that, that interaction or whatever, you know, because there's probably some other people. I don't know who's all in that, that group chat or whatever, but there's probably some people in there that I'm, I like and I'm friends with or whatever. I don't want to, you know, do them wrong or anything like that. And I'm not, like, trying to ruin Spec or JB or anything like that, but it's, like, their whole little, like, shtick just, like, rubs me the wrong way. And especially, especially... I don't, I don't get it. I don't... Our whole shtick rubs you the wrong way. Doing what? We, we talk about politics on a YouTube show. Like, I don't, I don't get it. And like, like I said, I've been doing this for a very long time. And when I started supporting America First, JB came to me and was like, oh, you do real life videos and streaming or whatever? Would you like to do a video with me? So I was like, sure, why not? So we started doing a video and then he wanted to do one the next week. And we ended up doing a video for like five or six weeks, right? And uh, then we, I was like, if we're gonna just keep doing this, we might as well call it something. So uh, I came up with like four or five different names and they were all supposed to be tongue in cheek and stupid and funny. Like the, we were gonna call it Ebony and Ivory, right? Because I'm white and he's black. It's like, ha uh, ha, uh, right? So we ca I came up with Optical Descent, which is supposed to be stupid. It's supposed to be tongue in cheek, right? And people go, oh, so you're just pretending to be retarded? It's like, no, it's, <laughs> it's literally supposed to be like, semi-ironic you could say it's not funny you could say that it's stupid whatever but it's people are acting like we are seriously saying like oh we're optical dissenters the whole the whole from the first episode the whole shtick was we're optical dissenters we dissent optically and the way that i came up with that name was because i was arguing with a wignat who was basically trying to say that um he was like oh we're we're all uh we're all dissidents just because we're not optics cucks doesn't mean that you shouldn't uh, be more welcoming of us or something like that. And this was a this is a very long time ago, right? And uh, this was like probably 2019, 2020, um, when I before I like even publicly supported Nick Fuentes or whatever, right? And I said something along the lines of "You dissent like a retard and make everybody look bad," whereas people like me. Uh, know how to dissent but still attract normal people because we use optics and then from there I was like yeah we're optical dissenters right which as a joke as something corny ironic whatever you, you want to call it so when we were coming up with a name of our show I wanted to call it something stupid something silly like that so we I said ebony and ivory or optical descent and there was a few other ones I don't even remember what the other ones were and he said, oh, Optical Descent is pretty funny, so we named it Optical Descent. And literally from the first episode, we're going, oh, you want to descent optically? And then people on Twitter are like <laughs> making the same jokes, but like not understanding that we are, we, we are in on the joke. We get it. We know that it's fucking stupid. Like, uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know, whatever. Oh, and that, but I don't understand what he's saying. He doesn't like our shtick. Our shtick is that we talk about politics on a YouTube show that gets like a couple of hundred views, if that, because it's something that we like to do. 
we are not trying to be America first authoritarians or authority figures in the America first movement. We are not trying to whatever. We have our own lives, especially me. I don't know much about JB's personal life, uh, but I consider him a friend. But like <laughs> for my for myself, the Internet and this whole sphere, right, is not my main focus in life. Here's what like actually like really rubbed me the wrong way. Was well, not only they're beefing with Harris and they're blocking, and it's like every fucking five minutes on my timeline, I have to see tweets like, my haters are obsessed with me. Motherfucker, nobody knows who you are, dude. How about you tone the fucking ego down for a second, okay? It's like see, you're trying know, to, like, I don't know manifest if he's talk, I don't know. this thing that isn't real. I don't, <laughs> I don't know if he's talking about me or JB or whatever, right? I never said something along those lines that my haters whatever i like i said i posted that one tweet that somebody sent to me and it had nothing i'm trying to manifest what i literally don't don't get involved with any type of drama you literally just said i was blocking people so i'm not even engaging in this e-drama or whatever you want to call it like it's just i don't know i don't like i said sometimes he i feel like he's talking about me and then he's talking about jb or somebody else so i don't really know but it's just it's not none of it is true my haters are, are obsessed. Who? Who? Who are you talking about? Are you okay, if he is talking about me, my, my haters literally were obsessed <laughs> with me, though. They literally were, because for hours straight, they were talking about nothing but me, and they were coordinating in Discord servers to attack me and to make polls about me and to like each other's posts and to retweet each other's posts for hours. That's obsessive behavior. So, like I said, I don't know if he's talking about me. I never said anything about my haters are obsessed with me or whatever the, whatever the case may be. Uh, I, what I did say was I block somebody and they get spexoneurosis, which is 100% true. I don't know now but because I'm off of Twitter, but people were sending me a bunch of screenshots of pictures where if you typed in on Twitter, spexo and blocked, it was like a bunch of people making this community with their identity being spexo blocked me. So, <laughs> I'm not trying to manifest anything. This was what was happening. And I, like I said, I didn't even respond or engage for the whole time. This is the first time that I'm really actually engaging and responding to the criticisms that are being lobbed at me unjustly. It's like you've been, you've been a part of this thing for like less than six months. You come in and you start rubbing everybody that's been here forever the wrong way. And then you start bragging about it. Okay, so he's definitely talking about me now, which doesn't make any sense. What am I bragging about at all? And it, I've been part or supporting publicly America First for since November when I met Nick at Stop the Steal. I've been doing my own thing on Instagram. Just because you haven't seen me because you're only on Twitter or whatever the case may be, uh, I've been around for six years. And even somebody like Kyle Frank, who followed me on Twitter, I mean on Instagram, since 2016 can vouch for that. Right, and I don't know where where Kyle. I know Kyle is really good friends with uh, Drug Cell and all these people who hate me now. But even he will admit that um, I've been doing this for since 2015. Okay, so and uh, I start like I said, it started with just making picture memes. Then it turned into making little cartoon, corny, cringe skits, and then it turned into me giving commentaries and reaction videos with my face out there over two years ago. So. I mean, and rubbing who the wrong way. I went to AFPAC and I got along with everybody. I had a great time. People were coming up to me and recognizing me, not only from uh, Twitter, because I wasn't even like anything on Twitter, right? And even before I got banned now, I wasn't, I had 1,200 followers. Before that, I got banned, I had 1,500 followers. So I wasn't anything big or anything, never even tried to be or claimed to be. And, but people still recognized me from my Instagram, which was separate from America First. At the first Stop the Steal rally that I went to in November, before I was even associated or, or publicly associated myself with America First, people were coming up to me at the Stop the Steal rally because they recognized me from Instagram, right? So I'm sorry, Beardson, I, I like you. Like I said, I have no, nothing against you, but you're just, you're wrong. <laughs> this, this is not how it went. This is not how the series of events occurred whatsoever. You piss everybody off that's been been around way longer than you have, and then all of a sudden you're like, yeah, they're my haters, they're obsessed. Like, what a prick, dude. You act like such a prick. At least Literally on the internet. Did not. I've Literally met did not happen. Like, IRL, both of these guys, and they seem like 
really nice guys. I don't know how what the. But literally none difference. of that none of, none of that happened. None of that happened. But it's so, like, man, you are such you're an about. egotistical asshole to come in here to this thing that you didn't make. You had no part of. And Never said I did. Start off acting like you fucking own this thing. You can go back to every single video from when I first started talking about America First. From my first pray and prepare for from everything. I have repeatedly said numerous times, I am just a supporter of America First. I am not an authority figure. I am not a shot caller. I am not trying to be. I am not trying to be a leader. I am a content creator who supports America First. People on Twitter were saying, oh, you're a Groiper lieutenant, you're a Groiper general. And I corrected them. I said, I am not any of those things. I am just a supporter. I am loyal to Nick. I am loyal to America First. That's it. So I don't know where this is coming from at all. Like I literally make my own content, stay to myself, don't mention anybody. People start talking shit to me. I block them, right? And I'm manifesting some egotistical thing. It's just not, it's just not true. And then, but then, like, I say something that's not even applicable to them, and they come, like, groveling to be like, hey, look, I didn't mean you to rub you the wrong way or whatever, and it's like... Bro, <laughs> once again, that's not what happened. That is, he's, like, misrepresenting everything. And I don't think, I, I don't think he's doing it on purpose, but that's just not what happened at all. I, I, I came groveling to him. People were messaging me saying that you were quoting my tweet in your stream, right? And out of respect, I tried to clear the air with you. So, no, not what happened. Why are you groveling to me, but you're, like, throwing shade at these guys? Yeah, they made fun of you. So what? Grow a I didn't at all. I didn't even respond to them. And you're saying, wait, hold on. They made fun of you, so why are you throwing shade at them? So if they make fun of me, I, and I can't make fun of them back. But then if I block them, that's also wrong. So how am I supposed to respond? So people, people could attack me, right? And I, I can't say anything, right? I just have to go, ha <laughs> that's, that's a good one, right? And even if they're blatantly lying about me, but if I attack them back, then I'm also wrong. Like, it doesn't make sense. So blocking or attacking is completely wrong. Okay. I, I, that, like, I don't understand what, what you want from me. And it's just part of it. That's what we do to each other. You know, like, that's how we interact. We're men. It, oh my gosh. Ugh. That's great and all, and like I said, <laughs> I have no problem with people making jokes, especially at my expense. That's not why I was blocking people. Like I said, they were making jokes and I thought they were funny. I was blocking them because they started saying that I neglect my children, that um, I'm putting my family at risk, that uh, I'm a clout chaser, I came out of nowhere. The things that also you are implying and you're just wrong, and as I said, I don't think that you're trying to be malicious about this. I don't think that you are trying to spread falsehoods. I think you actually believe this, but it's just not the case at all. It's the way that we fucking are. We are combative. We call each other out. We make fun of one another all the fucking time. And you know what? At the end of the day, it's, that's our... All right, so... <laughs> now, th like I said, this is the first time that I'm responding to any of this stuff. But he's implying that, like, I am so hurt and obsessed by these people talking about me, which was never the case. I never even responded to these people. I was literally just blocking them and going on about my day. Like, I wish my Twitter was still up because you could literally see the tweets from this. Like, I was literally, like, n all these people were talking shit about me. I would block them and just kept tweeting about my own stuff that had nothing to do with any of them, not even addressing any of these people. So I'm the one that was upset, obsessed and hurt, or whatever the case may be, but... They're doing like oh, full streams about me. I don't like, you know what I'm saying? So I, I, <laughs> I it's very, this is very bizarre to me. That is, that is our culture here that we have found it. I mean, <laughs> I get the whole making fun of things, but like I said, it's not about making fun of people. It's about blatantly lying and spreading calumny essentially. It's supposed to be a Christian movement, right? Calumny, spreading slander and lie. That's like leftist techniques. And also this whole discord, coordinated discord attack thing against me is the same shit that like fucking uh, Biggie Slunk and Carter and uh, what's the other guy's name with the fucking acne all over his face? That fucking kid. Ah, oh, I, I already forgot it. Puma, right? That's the same shit that they're doing to America First people. And then you have America First people doing it to other America First people. And it's like... Okay, like I don't, I don't get it. And like I said, if you don't like me, you don't like me. That's fine. 
but there are people that do and there's people that I get along with and people that enjoy my content, not even just on Twitter, on Instagram, on Telegram, on the other platforms that I've been on for multiple years. So this whole thing is just really just silly and now I'm just regretting even responding to this because this is why I didn't respond to this stuff in the first place because nothing being said has any substance nor is true. So, but I do want to correct the record, I guess, because like it's just I don't know where these where these things are coming from. I'm literally the most laid back guy in the world. Nothing bothers me because I have an awesome life <laughs> and I am very uh, I don't want to flex, but I am I am I'm fine where I am. All right, and this whole, like I said, sphere of the internet is just a hobby for me that I enjoy doing. So whatever. What happened? What happened in the chat? Oh shit! Hey Beers, who have I disrespected? I actually do just keep a low profile and just occasional tweets. Well, uh, okay, JB, for instance, here's 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 a here's a funny. So I guess little JB, thing I guess JB came in the chat. Mind you, I love you, JB, but. When Beardson went live with this or whatever, everybody was like, oh, are you going to go on the server and blah, blah to me and JB? And I said, absolutely not. I'm not engaging with anybody. I'm not even going to mention stuff. I'm not going to react. Nothing or whatever. And JB agreed. And within, what is it, 30 minutes, 20 minutes of the stream, he's in the chat. And then he ends up going on with his face and getting drunk. And it's just not a good look, JB. It's all right. We still love you, but... Uh, the only that's part of the only reason too why I ended up going on later on is because he was arguing with uh, Gibby and the other retard, and um, then I came on when they started talking about my kids or whatever. But we'll get to that. This is a fucking long video. Holy shit! Is that you post this fucking clip of Carter and then you're like bragging about the fucking group chat or whatever? Like, oh hey, uh, I know I know Carter's like on the outs of AF, but I I just love this clip so much. And I was like, yeah, you should feel bad. This is stupid. Like, why would you sit here and promote somebody that actively tried to subvert and actively tried to do damage to America? That did happen. And what's funny, too, is I was involved in this conversation, and I told JB the same exact thing in a nicer way. I said you shouldn't be posting clips of Carter, who was somebody that went against America first or whatever. And uh, I said this in the middle of while Beardson and JB were talking about this. I was actually on Beardson's side with in in regards to JB posting the Carter clip I said you shouldn't be posting people that have made themselves enemies of a movement that you claim to support right and JB said that's not unfair that's that's legitimate or whatever but I bet Beardson is not going to mention that I also agreed with him but we'll see and even if you don't like the groipers that have been here for a long time or if they don't like you that's that's normal probably and that's going to happen so you, you can either do, like, one or two things. You can either, like, do some, like, self-introspection on your own content and be like, well, why don't these guys like, why don't these guys like me, but they like Nick, and they like Jaden, and they like Beardson and everybody else, but they don't like my content. I don't care if they like my content, which is why I block them. I'm not, like, making content going, jeez, I hope that these guys who've been making fun of me on the internet like this content. What? That doesn't even make any sense. I still do not understand what the criticism is. My attitude, my egotistical, whatever that, that means. I've not even mentioned these people. I really am just, I don't get it. I, I really believe that this is all because I am friends with JB and they don't like JB. That's what I think this is. I think that I started making videos with JB and started being friends with him and they hate JB, so they hate me now. And people actually warned me about this uh, before when I announced that I was going to start doing a weekly thing with JB. People messaged me saying, look, people really don't like JB, they're going to start attacking you. And I responded, I said, if they want to attack me, they can attack me. I think that's a dumb reason, but whatever, I'll just block them. <laughs> and that's exactly what I did. And, and you can go on Drug Cell's Twitter. Right, you know, I you know, I'm not even gonna say that because because other people got banned too. But I had a feeling that he, him and his little gay Discord server thing were like mass reporting me or whatever because it's really weird that like four days later me and JB both got banned from uh, from Twitter. But oh, I guess a couple of other people also got banned, so I guess I can't say that. But regardless, if you go on his Twitter, you'll see 
like he's posting things of of me blocking people and him saying, "Oh, new Spexo block just dropped when I blocked him on Gab." And uh, people, other people saying, "Oh, Spexo blocked me. Spexo blocked me." And it's like, so I, what? What are you talking about? I'm not respecting you by blocking you. Like I'm not engaging with you. So that means I'm obsessed with you. That means I haven't. That means I'm egotistical. It just none none of it is adding up. I'm better than everybody else, even though I've only joined this thing six months ago or whatever. Ah, uh, not what happened. It's weird. And you know what's, like, really weird, too, about about this? is like, I don't think I've ever seen any of these guys in, like, my chat or in Jaden's chat. But they always act like my fucking biggest fans for some reason. You know? What? And it's Because I, I don't watch you. And I, and I don't watch you. I don't watch Jaden. I watch Nick Fuentes and uh, Vince James occasionally. And usually I watch Vince James on, like, BitChute. Or, like, I watch the replays of what he does. The only person that I watch live and that I am actively involved with watching is Nick Fuentes. Never said anything else. And I act like I'm your biggest fan. No, I respect you because you're friends with Nick Fuentes, who I admire as a political commentator. And I also have uh, respect for you that I will always have because you and Sean are the ones who introduced me to Nick Fuentes. So I'll, I will always have that, like, in my heart that you introduced me to somebody who inspired me and somebody that I admire. But acting like, like you, you I, I barely interact with you. Even when you were in the group chat with us, I don't even think I talked to you. I messaged you once out of respect because somebody told me you were talking about me, so, okay. But it's like, why are you acting like my fucking best friend or whatever every time I'm like out in public? But like, I never catch you like watching anything, you know? Like, why do you care so much about what my opinion is when you don't, you don't even like watch my shit? Wait. <laughs> I met you. I met you twice. Once at the step, stop the steal thing. I don't see. He, he he doesn't like mention who he's specifically talking about. Whether he's talking about JB or me, but if he's talking about me, I met him once at stop the steal. Literally, the only interaction was, uh, "Hey, can I have a picture with you?" Um, and he said, uh, "Oh, uh, I'm gonna need to get on stilts or something like that." And then at AFPAC. Uh, I met up with JB, who he was chilling with, and then Jaden met up with us, and we were hanging out with like 10 to 15 different people. It wasn't like I was hanging out with them. And then we snuck into CPAC and all got kicked out together. And that was the extent of it. And then I saw J uh, Beardson and Jaden at, at the actual AFPAC event, and I went up to them and sh shook their hands and said it was nice to meet you and uh, whatever. Like, what are, you t what are you talking about? I'm hanging around you like I'm trying to be your best friend? What, what? I'm I'm the egotistical one. That seems a little bit egotistical. It's really weird to me that both of them were acting very defensive about the things that I was saying, even though I wasn't even remotely talking about it. You literally said, for quote, you said you said, oh, now people are saying that they want a mass exodus from Twitter. When my tweet was literally, I hope there's a mass exodus from Twitter. So naturally, a bunch of different people, not JB, not me, because I don't watch your stream, messaged me saying that Beardson is talking about me. So. You're just like misrepresenting everything out of context or whatever the case may be. And like I said, I don't think you're doing it maliciously to try and purposely talk shit about me for no reason. I think that you must actually believe this stuff. So hopefully we can clear this up. Um, but none of this is true. And like I said, <laughs> I'm glad that I'm watching this. This is going to be the last time that I ever address anything like this whatsoever because I'm already wasting too much time on it. But... This is just insane to me. Why are you beefing like Chef Big Dog? Chef Big Dog's an awesome dude. These guys have been around the block. I don't even know who that is. And apparently, the drug cell guy is uh, a Groip Reward general, from what people have told me. I don't know how that, how that, how true that is. So apparently, and I, I don't even want to say this because I don't know anything else about him. So I'm not trying to lie about him. This is what people told me was that he came into America first and started like I guess being a public supporter during and after the Groyper Wars. Now, I never publicly endorsed America First, but I've been posting clips about uh, of Nick Fuentes on my Instagram and being, uh, I guess, like um, parallel to to him and never, never disavowing him or whatever, but basically like implicitly endorsing him, I guess, since 2000 and er, very early 2019 probably because uh, I already told my story about how I learned about Nick Fuentes through Beards and, Sh and Show and Show. And then uh, I didn't publicly, I mean, I didn't, um, I didn't like Nick Fuentes at first for like six months. So from like the mid, mid, 
2018 to beginning of 2019, uh, I didn't like Nick Fuentes, but I started watching his show like religiously. And then in like January or February 2019, that's when I really started like uh, watching every single night. But uh, regardless, you're saying that like, oh, I'm just new. I just came out of nowhere or whatever. Meanwhile, I've been supporting and watching Nick Fuentes for almost two and a half years now, right? Just because I didn't publicly do it. So it's just like you could do like a, a little bit of research, right? Because I've literally talked about this numerous times already. But maybe I'm just I'm too boring to uh, to watch. So I'll, so you're just gonna talk stuff that you don't know about. And I'm not. And look, I'm not saying these guys are infiltrators or anything like that. I I do legitimately think they like America first and they want to be a part of it. But you know what a subverter would do? He would come in. He would come in. He'd start making content. And then everybody that called him out for making bad content, uh, all the people that have been around the block and been around this thing for a while, he would he would basically block them and try to cast them out and, and label them as like haters and everything else and try to do, you know, put a right. <laughs> put a oh, what are you talking about, bro? N- literally did not happen. A subverter would come in, start making content, and then block everybody who doesn't like his content. No, no, I've been blocking everybody who doesn't like my content or even slightly agrees with me, slightly disagrees with me for six years, right? You are just making assumptions based on stuff that you don't know. That's all this, this entire stream so far has just been like, I know nothing about this person. I've seen other people talk about them. I've watched a tiny bit of their content that I didn't like and I found boring. So now I'm just gonna make this grand assumption about them and talk about them for three hours. That's literally what this entire stream has been so far. And it's just not, none of it is true. Literally none of it has been true or accurate in any way whatsoever. Nobody was crossing their arms saying, oh, my haters or whatever. Literally, the only thing I posted that even referenced haters was the meme of Skyrim that I that I posted. Okay, okay, the 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 three or four things that I even referenced or mentioned people that were against me or whatever was saying that I block somebody and they get spexonerosis and they can't stop talking about me, which is 100% true. Uh, the second one was the meme, the Skyrim meme or whatever. The third one was saying that I'm aware of the subculture of anti-spexo people um, and I'm honored, right? Which I deleted three minutes after, but of course they're not obsessed even though they screenshotted that and then posted that, right? But that's not obsessive behavior. And also the Discord coordination to make polls about me and to attack me, that's also not obsessive behavior, right? And then the other thing that I posted, right, which was just to let people know that I was aware of what was going on because I wasn't engaging whatsoever, was a a GIF saying I'm not going anywhere when the retard drug cell said, I'm going to keep talking shit about Spexo until he deletes his account and gets off of the internet forever, right? And I responded with a gift saying, shoot, I ain't going anywhere, right? Literally the only interactions, the only responses that I gave to any of these people or any of, or any references or implications whatsoever, that's it. And Beardson right now is making it out like I was obsessed with all these people talking about me. It was like, why are they talking about me? No. But then on the other hand, you're saying, well, you're just blocking everybody. And it's like, okay, so which is it? I'm obsessed with these people or I'm blocking them? Because that's what would happen, right? And I talked to Nick privately about this. So I, it really is just irrelevant to me what they're saying. But like I said, I just want to clear the air and respond to oh, all of this shit for once and for all. Un- unintentionally... They are acting like someone that would do those kinds of things. Right. And By blocking people. I'm, that's okay. That's why I say to lurk more. Okay? I know you get really excited. You go to an IRL event. You meet Nick or whatever. You see, like, all your favorite content creators and stuff. And you're like, yeah, I just want to be, <laughs> be doing what these guys are doing. No. You know, that's, really not what that's, that's not what happened. That's not what happened. That's talking about, like, a month ago, right after after. Oh, like, it you hurts. You have this effect. It hurts. It hurts. Blocking people who are smarter than you doesn't make you like Nick. That's true, Chef Big Dog. Big 07 to Chef Big Dog. Thank you so much. Blocking people. Oh, what did you say? Blocking Chef people who are smarter than you doesn't make you like Nick? So are you implying that Nick blocks people that are smarter than him? That doesn't even make any sense. Also, I'm extremely intelligent. I have a 131 IQ. You can cope and say that I don't, but I do. So that doesn't even make sense. I don't even know who Chef Big Dog is. He keeps bringing up Chef Big Dog, but... Okay. Alley gang fight sort of shit, but like you know, we're a bunch of dudes that that just tell it like it is, which is often perceived with with asshole behavior, right? It's not. A- 
I would be fine with the asshole behavior if any of the criticisms were legitimate. Saying, like, saying my content is boring or that I'm not funny or that I'm dumb or whatever, that's not really legitimate criticism, but I can understand that because then that's just your opinion and whatever, that's subjective. But then just don't watch it. There are people that do like my content that aren't even part of America First on Instagram and other places. And there's people on Twitter who also do like my content. So that's fine. I don't have a problem with you criticizing me, even making fun of me. What I have a problem with is the lies and the misconceptions and misrepresentation of things that you don't know about. And I didn't even know, like I'm getting a little bit frustrated right now because I didn't even know that Beardson said all of this stuff until right now. And he's literally regurgitating the same points that all of these other guys were saying which was the reason I blocked them because everything they said was a lie because they know nothing about me. And uh, so it's just like, I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Uh, these people, I think, have way too much time on their hands, maybe. I don't know. Not necessarily Beardson because maybe he's just getting secondhand advice. And I really, I'm not trying to start a fight with, with Beardson. I like Beardson. Um, but this is just ridiculous. Like, I, I had no idea that it was this this much of like just lie after lie i rarely block rarely respond to crit barely respond to criticism and acknowledge valid critiques so i guess this is jb responding in his group chat i think this oh is... but here's the thing man yeah. you don't my life so i don't know why you and spec were like beardson's talking about me but he's not saying my name that's not what i said at all bro. like what, what do you think that that is exactly like what do you think that that is jb I think that JB end up coming on. I think they're just gonna probably talk to each other now. I'm gonna fast forward more. Dollar, talk to for me what? that way, dude. For what? You're not gonna well, sit there and pull that shit with me. Well then, fucking boot me then, Beardson. Kick me off your fucking shit stream then, because you're kind of pissing bad, me off. Bad look. And, and, I don't bad care. Bad I don't thing? give a shit if I piss you well, off. I, I, I know, That's kind of the you point. Don't you don't. You don't. That's really kind of the point. Yeah, I know you don't care. I know you don't care. That's fine. But what's annoying is that. You, you're imputing my motives. You're assuming Why, that I'm Why here just even... to like, get clout by what? You that you thought I, took, you took criticism with. Because I do think that you have uh, a certain. Even though you're the asshole, the quote unquote asshole of the movement, I do think you have a certain amount of social wherewithal. Uh, I'm sorry. To where I'm, you're like, I'm the boring one. I, I don't feel like just <laughs> this naming is, I, this I'm person dreading outright this right now. because is, they haven't done anything. Like, Why does to anybody care you about this? So like I, I, I don't need to hear I don't need to hear fucking talking points that Nick's talking about from two people who mm -hmm. can fucking barely string two words together, okay? And and who are yeah, quite frankly but here's like it's like anti comedy. You know what do you know what anti comedy is? It's like where you tell a joke that's purposefully bad because the this is what I'm saying. Like his his critiques, which he could critique JB all the time. Whatever JB can stick up for himself. But talking about me, I can't string two two words together. What are you even talking about? And regurgitating the same talking points as Nick is just not accurate whatsoever. We come up with a couple of different topics that we're going to talk about, and then we talk about them. And obviously, if we support a movement or we support Nick Fuentes, our opinions are going to align with what he says but we are not talking about the things that he talked about on the show the night before or whatever the case may be we're giving our personal perspective on events that occurred and also it's not even like we're talking specifically only about current events we are giving our personal experiences with things. We're talking about movies that we like. We're not only talking about political stuff. Obviously, we have a political worldview, and we have a traditionalist, paleocon nationalist worldview when we talk about any subject whatsoever, but we're not just regurgitating points that Nick said. And to say that I can't string two sentences together or whatever the fuck you just said is just not true. You can say that about JB if you want. He could, he could defend himself or whatever. But saying that I'm not smart is just inaccurate. It's a cope. Um, <laughs> I, I'm not gonna go full dox myself, but if you knew, if you knew how much money I made, if you knew what my situation in life was, if you knew anything about me, you, not you maybe, but because like I said, I'm really not trying to talk bad about you. But 
let's just I'll use Gibby and fucking drug cell as examples because I don't care about them whatsoever. If they knew about my situation in life, they would probably want to kill themselves if they don't already right now because their lives are so pathetic. So for you to say that I'm not smart or whatever the case may be is just inaccurate. It's like saying that I'm ugly or any other ad hominem attacks. It's not true. I'm six foot five. Um, I have fine physiognomy, proportional features. Just from personal experiences, um, I have no problem with getting girls. I'm happily married now, don't get me wrong. But even as a fat degenerate, um, I had no problem getting girls. So, and I disavow premarital sex and all that stuff now, of course, but um, to, to act like I'm like this socially awkward, I can't string two sentences together or whatever, is just completely inaccurate based on the evidence of where I am at in life and my past excursions in life. So I really, I don't like that, that he said that at all. I think that's, uh, I don't know why you're adding me into this, especially when I never even said anything negative about you or engaged in you and I showed you nothing but respect and deference. So I kind of feel that's that's a little uncalled for, but it is what it is. And also, like I said, I don't, I don't know why you have to be the arbiter of what is good content and what isn't. I would understand if I was somebody who came in like Carter or somebody like that and was like, oh, I'm the new face of America first. I'm this, I'm that. That is not the case with me. It's your, your perception is that's what I was doing, but it's there is it's not based in reality whatsoever. When you're already in voice chat, I hope you're not leaving. There's, no, there's nothing okay. to run. So these two retards, where is he? I don't know who this one is. I'm, okay, I don't know. I, I know that Gibby and Drug Cell ended up coming in here and talking with J, uh, JB and, um, then I think Steve Franson came in. I haven't watched it, but I'm only going to, I'm going to get to the point where they talk about me and then where I come in and then we'll watch where I came in. And hopefully that'll be the end of it because I am bored out of my fucking mind. Ironically, the guy who makes boring content apparently is bored out of his fucking mind watching this nonsensical e-drama. To hook up my camera so I at least get better quality. Oh, why? <laughs> why? So you can clip it, so you can clip it. Post it on his YouTube like Spexo did. <laughs> like, how is that a dig? That I posted a clip of me talking to Nick Fuentes on my YouTube? Like, oh, <laughs> you silly. You like somebody, you admire somebody politically, and you got to talk to them, and you're going to post it on your YouTube? What a loser. How is that How is that a dig? Like, I don't understand at all. This guy, real, this, this dude literally lives on the internet. He probably spends like 16 hours on the internet a day. <laughs> and... I probably cut it out because I'm trying to edit this down, but he also said, oh, oh the people in your group chat, like 70% 70, 70 of them are my friends. And it's like, yeah, the people in your gay little discord, right, are sending me screenshots of the gay tactics you're doing to coordinate to attack my Twitter. But uh, Dude, your friend you Spexo has just yeah. left you floundering. He's left you floundering like he leaves his kids floundering when he's clipping oh. A him calling the next show. Yeah, this is what you stop. are defenseless. That's you when have nobody yep. tag it. So like he said that about my family. Yeah, that I leave like my WWE kids floundering, team. right? He's out Somebody messaged it. me that he said There's this, and then I ended up going on to the. Then I ended up going on to the stream because he was talking about my kids. So I'm gonna fast forward to when I get on the stream because this is fucking boring. All right, so we got Harris so. wants to be brought in too. Uh, so. I don't wanna. I don't wanna like gangbang. I'll bring Harrison in a minute. Oh, I got like three five. No, bring, him in. No, bring it. no, 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 no. Bring him in now. It's not your stream, JB. Shut up. All right. Yeah, let's mute. Let's mute JB. Bring him in now. <laughs> let's mute JB. JB, this just get muted this for a bit. This is what I'm talking about. The no respect on this guy. No respect. What? All right. Harris is here. All right. Gibby, Harris, Spexo, JB. There you go. Finally, we're all here. <laughs> And I'll, just, I'll just leave myself. I'll let you guys uh, discuss. Let's keep, let's keep let's keep it optical dissidents, okay? So, uh, so uh, optical Harris, dissidents. you guys What's cannot Harris, Harris. Well, so. No, I I basically I only have <laughs> JB, one JB, just be quiet for no. a little bit, buddy. <laughs> bro, no, I just bro, like, like, bro, bro, you oh, were, just give me <laughs> no. Hold just, on, just give me one we, question. I, I, just I wanted want to go question. super serious. It was funny when he was yelling. I'll shut up. I'll shut up after this. I have one question. <laughs> it's like a drug. Like, look, one more drink. Just one Harris. more drink. Listen. <laughs> shut up. 
Don't. Harrison, I swear to God, you tell me to shut up one more fucking time, and I'm gonna go scorched earth on you. I swear to God. You tell me to shut up one more fucking time, you fucking mulatto Malcolm X, I'm gonna go fucking scorched earth. I swear to God. Okay, I'm sorry, man. Harris, what's your problem with Spexo? All he, all he does is speak his mind, and he speaks optically, and he dissents optically. He's boring, that's my problem. <laughs> yeah, that's Bert, Bert, problem. he may have a better I'm... hairline than you, but he's still just as boring, and his podcast is just well, that's shit. a very like, low like, bar. Right that's yeah, you're live, you hear your boring, low-energy bullets. Oh yeah. my gosh, you, yo, you know what would be a really cool idea if you didn't think like my content? You don't fucking watch it. Instead, you coordinate Discord attacks on my fucking timeline, like little homosexuals, because you, you have mean, no like, other things to do. You mean like boyfriends do. I have this Dude. No, no, you're a guys, They're guys, attacking guys, me. go, go like this, guys. No, oh yeah, attacking me. I don't give a fuck if you attack me. I this actually, is coordinated. The They're attacking my livelihood. Shut up. Shut up. They're Shut up. doing. Shut up, retard. <laughs> Shut up. All right, that's your name. Drug cell, right? Yeah. They are yeah. ruining okay. my cell, right? life. Oh, I actually drug like cell? ruining this my life. My you have zero effect on my life. If it were ruining my life, I wouldn't block you, moron. The only reason I, <laughs> if I didn't have reason, any effect, you wouldn't. The only reason I joined this is because Gibby, that little retard who Blo actually blocking used to like, everyone who wants likes, to talk about uh, like, yeah. Harris's tweets. Yeah, because yeah, I'm not I, here I, for that, you fucking moron. Yo. Yeah, oh no, I'm gonna keep engaging with people who are spreading lies about me and making shit up. No, I'm not lies. here for that, retard. Wait, why are you lies? lies being spread? Okay, How is here. Oh, what, tweeting what are the lies about? Saying, what are the lies about? Lie. Right, what's the lies tweeting about? Have a, oh, you came out of nowhere. You're a cloud chaser. You're a grifter. Yes, you don't true. Know, yeah. the, these oh, are no, true. Uh, no. False, actually. No, actually, no, false. You're you right. right. You've, You've been, been trying to be East no, for 10 actually, years. So for 10 years, you moron. No, actually, you're a retard. Oh, wait, you've been watching my videos. Oh, that's so cute. You're a fan. You're a fan. Disgusting oh, that's awesome. Disgusting things you're about your relatives. It's that's crazy. Horrendous. You're a fan. That's that's awesome. I'm glad to know. Actually, no. <laughs> I've been making just, content, political content, content, on Instagram for six years as a yeah, hobby. Yeah, yeah. You've, you've been posting my right? You've been you're posting fast wave for years. I'm we know. To a fan. <laughs> I was never first of all, I was never a dumb dumb shit on Instagram. Instagram. Yeah, I was I was an accelerationist or whatever you want to call it. I was never a witness. <laughs> and yeah, oh I posted God. retarded shit. Wait, acceleration is pretty laughing. much the same thing. You guys are laughing. <laughs> yeah, it needs to get yeah, you, know you, know you guys you're have loud. no idea what you're talking about. You can't about. even you like understand what we're saying. You literally have no anything anything about me. I'm heated because of Gibby talking shit about my kids when you have no idea about anything. I think he said what you're doing is reckless. I think what he said is doing is reckless as an adult. Hey, 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 hey. Look, I will mute everybody here. No, shut the fuck up, JB. We're, we gotta have one at a time. We gotta have one at a time. I pre Look, I love blood sports. I, we can't understand what anybody's saying. We gotta have at least one at a time. Let's let Spexo go first because he's new and he hasn't been on yet. So let him speak his piece and then we'll go to Gibby and then we'll go to JB and then we'll go to Harris. Okay? Sound good? Game plan? Spexo, go. Okay. Yeah. I make my own content. If you don't like it, you don't have to watch it. If you think I'm boring or you think I'm not funny or entertaining, awesome. I don't care. Don't watch it. I actually liked Drug Cell's original content when he was doing banters with me or whatever the fuck you want to call it when he was like uh, putting my face on the Inglorious Bastards guy thing. I like that. But then he wants to compare me to Carter, who was a subversive wig mat, who whatever. And that's where I said, okay, this guy knows nothing about me. And he's just talking shit about me. I'm going to block him. And then after I block these people, they're still talking shit about me. I'm still getting messages saying, oh, look what they said about you. Look what you said about you. So I'm not even going to engage. And I wasn't even going to come on this show until somebody messaged me saying that Gibby is talking shit about my kids. All right? You have no idea about anything about me. All right? You think call me a clout chaser or a grifter. I do this as a hobby. I'm not on the internet 24-7 like you people. So whatever your problem with me is, I don't care. I'm not engaging with it. And anybody who likes your shit or wants to keep attacking me about things that they don't know about, like people saying, like, oh, I'm posting my family and I'm not taking care of my family, all this nonsense, you have no idea what the fuck you're talking about. I'm not going to engage with it. I'm going to block you, and that's going to be the end of it. Okay, if I can jump in here for just a second before we get to Gibby and everything else. I don't agree with Gibby, what, with what Gibby said, at being a, you know a family man or whatever. You, you, you do have free time. It doesn't consume your life 24-7. I don't think you're neglecting your kids or anything like that. I will say I do think it is reckless to post your family on the internet given the prior history what? of... No, 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 no. Shut up, JB. I, you're not, it's not your turn. It's shut the fuck important. up. Shut the fuck... It's right. up. Shut up, you drunk. I will put you in the... Hold on. I, I will I, I, literally yo, put I'm you in the drink tank. Let me finish my point. We're all... It's one, one point at a time here. All right. 
I will right. say that I, I do think it is reckless to post your family on the internet, and I can say that from a person who has been stalked and harassed for four fucking years. <sighs> People have sent me pictures of my house threatening to kill me. I, I have had people literally target people that I just, I, I barely know because they know the kind of content that I make. They know what I do. And these people have tried to ruin relationships with me. And these people, you, you don't understand how sick these people are. These people will literally, once your kids grow up, this doesn't end. It, it never ends with these people. They will target your children. They will make sure your children can't work. They will make sure your children aren't admitted to college or anything like that. Can, so I do think it is reckless for, for you to do that. I, just, can I, just putting it out there. All right. I'm sorry. I, I have to go. I told whoever was in the waiting room that I had to go in 10 minutes, but I will just respond to that real quick. And I, I'm sorry. I have to go. Um, every po picture that I posted of my family, it was either censored or they were unidentifiable in every single picture. Also, I would not be showing my face or showing anything if I was not protected, if I was not financially capable or if anybody could financially ruin me. And I have repeatedly told other people that they shouldn't show their face. And I was showing my face before I even started supporting America first. And I've been doing it for years. It's not like I came out of nowhere started showing my face i came to twitter in the last couple of months because of stop the steal and because of that stuff but i've been active on youtube and instagram for years so that's all i want to say about that i apologize that i have to go but uh if you don't like my content don't watch it i'm not here for e-drama i'm not here for back and forths with people and quote tweeting and all this stuff don't talk about my family and uh if you don't like me <laughs> then don't watch me and you'll get blocked i gotta go thank you for having me on beardson bye all right talk to you later. pussy bye. coward Okay. Hold on, I'm, I'm going to say something here. Yeah, go ahead. Here, let, let, let the cow book I didn't in hear, for a second. I didn't hear this at all. So, okay, so Beardson just, so this is important to notice, like it's important to notice how interactions go with people, and, and you know, I don't know Spexo very well, and this is just like an initial impression, um, because I haven't met him, and you know, so on and so forth, and he has my respect for, for going to FBAC too, and, and so this is just sort of like initial, but you want to notice, and this is for the audience in general, I'm not speaking to you guys, because you got, you know, Harris, Gibby, Beardson, it, JB, I've known you guys for a long time, and I know where your guys' thinking is at on things. But what happened just then was that Beardson leveled with Spexo and, and gave him some really good insight, gave him some good, like, perspective. And Spexo justified himself he was immediately on the defensive and and didn't take any of this um as feedback and so i don't know spec so i don't know how things are going with him i don't know how they've gone with him but just thinking about how things are going to go forward from here i'm really not impressed with that this was really good feedback from beardson beardson gets shit on a lot um but beardson has this like incredible sniffer he has the stain power and he, he really does have good feedback to offer. And now having said this, I hope that if Spexo is listening or if the message gets to Spexo, that Spexo will take this as feedback as opposed to criticism. And I don't, I don't know what's gonna happen with him. I don't know where you guys stand on him. I'm not here to come to any conclusion about him, but it's just important to notice this stuff uh, when, we're, when we're dealing with people and when we're talking about this common goal that we have, which is to make America great again or, or to make America first, it's important that we look at people and say, well, are they taking feedback and are they working with this? Are they, is this landing with them at all? Or are they immediately doing this sort of like alt-right, like wignat kind of thing where it's like immediately on the defensive, immediately I know better, immediately I'm self-justifying. Uh, I, I love Steve Franson. I actually used to really enjoy his content. And I respect him, and I respect his what he's saying. But he, the feedback that Beardson was giving me, of course, I'm going to respond to that. the The criticism or feedback, whatever you want to call it, that he was saying was that showing your family is reckless, and um, that uh, putting yourself out there is reckless, and things of that nature. So, what am I going to say? I said you're right. I agree, I agree with that statement, and I too have told people the same exact thing but I've been showing my face for years and I don't show my family. Every time that I've posted a picture of my family, the pictures have been censored. So this is not me being on the defensive, this is me telling you the truth. This is me explaining my position. So what do you want me to, what would you rather me say? Say, okay, I'm just gonna get off the internet now, I'm just gonna now, now uh, 
I'm just gonna delete everything I ever I ever did because you're saying that I'm being reckless. Meanwhile, I've been doing this for years. I'm an adult who has assessed the situation and feel comfortable enough showing my face. So I don't understand. I don't understand that. Uh, like I said, I like Franson. I like Beardson. Um, I just think that I just disagree with them, right? And like I said, I've talked to Nick privately, and obviously I'm not going to say exactly what was said, but. He encouraged me that if I like doing content to just keep doing my thing. So that's whose advice I'm going to take because that's who I admire the most. And even, like I said, even if Nick said that he didn't like me, even if Nick said that I'm cringe or whatever the case may be, I would still support America First and Nick Fuentes because I truly believe in the movement. And I've been making content for six years and I'm going, I have no plan on stopping because it is a hobby of mine that I like. It is not my life. It is not something that I am making my livelihood or my career. I have a very good career, but it's just like, I, I feel like it's just, I have been misrepresented and the, uh, the feedback is accurate that you shouldn't show your face if you can avoid it or if you're not in the situation financially where people can hurt you or that if it could affect your personal life or your professional life or business life or whatever the case may be. Obviously, I 100% I agree with that. But for somebody like me who is financially stable, who has established himself, has his own life, all these things, then I, what do you want me to do? I'm, I'm already out there. I've already had hit pieces written about me calling me a white supremacist and a white nationalist and stuff like that. My, I, I'm, like I said, I'm not going to go and dox myself and, and fully, but people around me know what I'm about. They know my views, my religious views. They know everything like that. So for a person in my situation, I feel comfortable showing my face. I feel comfortable being honest and talking about my views. Okay. So yes, it's accurate that you shouldn't do that if you're not capable of, but also on the other hand, if you are capable, why not normalize these views? Why not support things that you believe in like everybody else does? Like nobody gave me problems about showing my face or talking about this stuff before I started supporting America first. So uh, that's just something I noticed. I wanted to just put that out there. Uh, I'm curious to hear what you guys have to say, but I was not impressed with that exchange just now. I mean, and I, uh, from, and I, from, I wanna... so then. well, yeah, because because Beardson gave great advice there. Well, I appreciate that. I do want to say though, like, it doesn't it doesn't matter if you self censor or whatever. If your face is out there, they're going to find you. They are. It doesn't matter. My face is out there. I don't even. I like my. You know, nobody. I've never once posted my wife ever. They found her. They've sent her messages. They've sent my father in law messages. Oh. They've sent my brother in law messages. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how much you try to protect or self-censor. If your face is out there, if your face is out there, they are going to find you. They already, like I said, they already have. They've already written articles about me. Nobody's found my family or anything like that. But even if they did, I, <laughs> I'm, in my personal life, I am protected, okay? I have assessed the risk. And honestly, it's, it's taking a little bit far, in my opinion that you're basically saying like, oh, they're gonna come after you because you're supporting what? Paleo conservative, conservatism. Um, if you support Trump, right? You're called a white nationalist and a white supremacist and stuff. Do you think that they're differentiating people that support people like Nick Fuentes and Trump and Alex Jones and stuff? No, they're not. I, <laughs> I Like I said, I don't wanna, I'm not going to give personal information out and make it easier for people to dox me, but I am well aware of the risks. I'm a 28 year old adult. I am well aware of the implications and the risks and the slander that is going to be lobbed at me. And I have decided as an adult, because I know that I cannot be personally ruined if I did get completely doxed or whatever the case may be, that I am perfectly fine with showing my face and talking about my, my views. And l like I said, it wouldn't matter if I was just a boomer tier Trump supporter or an Alex Jones supporter or whatever the case may be, but you're acting like I need to be this secretive operative CIA agent to support Nick Fuentes, which maybe a lot of people do. Maybe a lot of people are in positions where they can get fired from their jobs if they're caught supporting Nick Fuentes or going to AFPAC or anything like that. Or maybe they're in positions where if their social circle found out that they had uh, nationalist views that they would be ostracized or something along those lines. I know for myself that that is not the case. So I don't understand what the problem is. 
Nick doesn't seem to have a problem with me, right? So I don't, I don't, I don't understand it. And um, like I said, like I appreciate the feedback or whatever, but I just, and I, like I said, I respect these two guys, but I just think it's completely inaccurate. You can like blur their fucking faces like they're on cops or whatever, but it's not going to matter. They're still going to do it. They're still going to find you. They're still going to find your family, find your friends, and everything else. And that's what. I, and it's really disappointing that he like. You know, well, I'm I'm protected financially. Yeah, for now, for now. But just wait. Just wait until. This is what I'm saying. They, you don't know my personal situation. I'm sorry that all that stuff that you just talked about happened. I don't know if I cut it out or whatever when I'm editing this video, but he basically said how like, oh, people are harassing him and his family and the FBI stuff or, or whatever the case may be. That sucks that that happened to him. But <laughs> I am not making my life content creation. I am doing it as a hobby and I've been doing it for years for the fucking billionth time, right? And when I say that I am financially stable, it's not to flex. And I don't mean that, oh, I just have a lot of money now or whatever. I mean that the entire apparatus, the entire situation that I am currently in will not be affected if the worst case scenario happened, okay? And I'm not going to explain myself any deeper than that, but trust that I have talked to the right people, I've conversed with lawyers, I've done a lot of research on my own that I have mitigated the risks and assessed the risks. And also, it's not that serious for me, all right? So while you're, I feel like you're just making it a bigger deal than it is, and I understand where you're coming from because for some people it is, for me in my personal situation, not for anybody else's situation, for my personal situation, I am comfortable showing my face and expressing my views, okay? So I understand the concern, if that's what you wanna call it, but it does not apply to me specifically. Okay, so. Spec, I like, I, I do. I legitimately think he's a nice guy, but him butting heads with Gripers because of his content and the way that he carries himself, I don't, I don't, it rubs me the wrong way. It does. It, it rubs me the wrong way when I see Gripers that have been in this thing for a long fucking time, for a long fucking haul, like Gibby, yeah. like <clears throat> Harris. And, and don't get me wrong, Gibby and Harris are fucking assholes. I'll tell them that to their fucking. All right. Enough. I've had. I've heard enough. So with Beardson and Franson, like I said, I respect them completely. Franson, I think, is one of the most well-spoken, nice guys. I think he's a he's a genius. Uh, Beardson, I've met multiple times, but both of them right now, the way that their criticisms and their feedback, or whatever the case may be, while it may be well-intentioned, it is just coming from a place where they don't know anything about me. They don't know anything about my personal situation, or whatever the case may be. And as I said, I'm an adult. Okay, I have assessed the risk. I know what I'm what I've been into for six years. That's another thing. They keep acting as if I just came into this thing or whatever. No, I've just started publicly promoting or whatever, supporting America first. And also they're saying, Oh, you're just putting you're showing your face and risking everything to put out bad content. You might think it's bad content. A lot of people don't. And the evidence for that is like I said, dozens of people telling me that they found Nick Fuentes through my content. And even more people telling me that they came to Jesus Christ or that they uh, converted to Catholicism because of me. That is what is important to me. That is my goal or aspiration if I'm going to achieve anything from putting out content. Um, Besides being a hobby and talking about things that I'm passionate about, I'm not trying to achieve clout. I'm not trying to make this a career for myself. I'm not trying to monetarily gain from putting political and religious content out like I do. What I'm trying to do is spread a message. And if I spread that message to a certain amount of people, even if it's a small amount of people, and it helps change their lives for the better, meaning that they become nationalists and they start living a more traditional life and they start aspiring to raise families and to find good women and to start going to church and doing those things, which is my message and has been for years, or they uh, just start looking into Catholicism and convert to Catholicism, and I inadvertently helped prevent them from going to hell, honestly. So if that's what happens and that's the result of me, even if it's only affecting a tiny amount of people and I've led them in the right direction, then it's worth whatever risk there may be, okay? So as I said, if you don't like my content, don't watch it. Right? And as for these other homosexuals, Gibby and Harris Walker, who are just complete lowlives, as I said, they spend 16 hours a day on the internet coordinating attacks against my Twitter, which I don't even have a Twitter anymore. And I gotta say, even though it sucks being banned off Twitter, it is such, it is a relieving feeling. It's like a, it's like a weight off of my shoulders. You know, I don't have to self-censor anymore. You know, I don't have to completely watch what I say or keep getting messages of people talking shit about me on, on the internet and stuff like that. So. 
that that's definitely a relief but as far as these people or anybody talking shit about me even uh, like just because they don't know what they're talking about it's fine but i've already won i'm six foot five highly intelligent I have great physiognomy and Nordic features. You can cope and say that I'm ugly, but it's just simply not true. I'm married for almost four years. I have two beautiful children. I own my own house, own two cars, have a full-time career, financially stable and able to show my face and speak my mind and my views without having to worry about really anything. Not because I'm uh, trying to sh do cloud or whatever, but because I was smart enough and had the wherewithal to get myself in a position in life that I am. That's where my life's at. These people are anonymous people on Twitter talking shit about me and coordinating in Discord to make fun of me and to make fun of my content. I, I, don't, I don't care. Like, I've, I've already won. There's nothing you can say about me that is going to affect my life. So I think I've addressed everything. And hopefully I never have to talk about any bullshit e-drama ever again. I've been going for over two hours now and now I have to edit out everything and try to condense it into a more concise, digestible uh, video for YouTube or whatever. And hopefully this will put at rest with everything. And I also gotta say, regardless of what these people say, I've gotten messages since I appeared on there, right? Saying that, oh, now now they respect me for going on there and, and now they understand me a little bit better. I've gotten people messaging me, <laughs> begging me to unblock them, right? So they could say whatever they, whatever they want. A lot of people have, uh, who were not liking me before I went on the stream, um, came, came around and started being friendly with me. So whatever the case may be. And like I said, I'm on good terms with Nick and that's really what matters to me. And even if I weren't, I would still support America first because I believe in it. And that's all there really is to say about this. So hopefully people have a better understanding of who I am and what I do now, even though probably not because it, all these people on Twitter who just talk shit about me obviously have never, um, Actually, you know what? That's another thing I wanted to say that I didn't get a chance to say. These people, their criticisms, Gibby and um, Drug Cell, right, were like, oh, you're a clout chaser who came out of nowhere, but you've been making content for 10 years and you want to be an e-celebrity and you're a failed e-celebrity. So wait, which one is it? Is it I'm a clout chaser who came out of nowhere or I've been trying to be an e-celebrity for 10 years? Which both are completely inaccurate, all right? I made Call of Duty videos when I was a teenager which were completely degenerate and shock value. I was, a, I was on drugs at the time and stuff. And then three of my accounts got banned. I didn't make any content for like five to seven years, whatever it was. And then I started an Instagram page and I didn't sh make any videos or show my face for three or four years into my Instagram account. So that's just completely inaccurate. They're saying I was a wig nat, which I never was a wig nat. I'm sure that it was Kyle Frank who said that I used to be like an accelerationist type or whatever, which by accelerationist, I was basically the type of person that was saying like, oh, there's, uh, there's no political solution. Um, when, when is there going to be a mass awakening and, a, and when are we going to rise up, which I completely disavow now, obviously. And I guess you could say I was aligned with some of the Wignat types back then, but I was never a white nationalist. I was never a white supremacist. I was never an ethno-narcissist. I always thought those people were gay and corny. I was never like that whatsoever. I was always in favor of traditionalism and um, even before I was a Catholic, I was always in favor of cultural Christianity and Christian morals. And that is the message that I have always tried to spread. I have never tried to spread any wigger nationalist nonsense. So that is complete, a complete falsehood. So like I said, I appreciate anybody who wants to have legitimate criticism or try to give me feedback with good intentions, but I've yet to hear, I've yet to hear anything legitimate. And that's not me being egotistical or whatever the case may be. Every single criticism, every single thing that has been said about me has been either a complete lie or a complete misconception and something taking out of context or just misrepresenting something that I said or did and just or just blatantly making shit up about me. So I'm all open to uh, whatever criticism or whatever, but I've yet to hear any real significant legitimate criticism. And that's all I'm going to say. This is it. I am not going on anybody's show. I am not going on any more back and forths. I didn't even want to make this video, but people keep bugging me to respond and stuff like that, which I'm done doing. But I need to address the lies, and, uh, and that's it. So this is my last response video to any e-drama or anything like that, hopefully, right? That, that, that's my plan right now, is that this is the last time I'm ever going to address any type of criticism like this whatsoever. 
you know, and also I'm very open. So if you want to talk shit about me or you have a question about me or whatever, you can DM me on Instagram or on Telegram, even though I really don't check Telegram that much, but you can DM me on Instagram and I'll talk with people. I'll answer questions, right? Like don't just go around spreading calumny and making shit up about me, right? So that's that. Hope you enjoyed this because I definitely did not.